Have you ever taken an Amtrak train? Maybe you were just trying to travel a short distance between cities. Maybe you live somewhere where there isn't an airport, but there's a train station. Maybe you're one of the few who enjoys taking the train because of the sights to be seen. No matter who you are, if you've taken Amtrak, you probably know that it's objectively not the best way to get around. Whether it's the delays, ancient equipment, or maybe just the fact that it can take twice as long as driving, it's clear that there's much better ways to get around. As Amtrak continues on into its 50th year of service, it seems that America is getting back into trains. Not only are higher speed trains pretty efficient for traveling distances of under 300 miles, but they're also better for the environment than almost any other mode of transportation. Look at almost every other country. They have fast, clean, and efficient passenger trains connecting most of their major cities. Luckily, after years of Amtrak's trains feeling like a time capsule of a time before planes, it seems that they're finally starting to improve their services and equipment. In this video, I'll go over a few of Amtrak's biggest projects to improve their national passenger rail network. This video is split into a few sections, such as new locomotives, new rail cars, the Avelia Liberty high-speed trains, and more. If you want to learn about only one of these specific topics, feel free to skip to that section using the timestamps in the description. But if you want to learn about everything Amtrak is doing, just sit back and relax as we learn about the future of Amtrak's fleet. Chapter 1. New ALC-42 Locomotives My favorite era of Amtrak was the late 90s and early 2000s. Not because I'm nostalgic for it or anything, heck, I wasn't even alive then, but I just wish that I could have been a rail fan during this era, because unlike the current day of Amtrak's equipment being the homogenous mixture of Phase 5 equipment, back then one could still see equipment from the 1980s, meaning that you could see as many as four different Amtrak paint schemes on one train. As the 2000s progressed, Amtrak eventually repainted or retired all equipment that still sported retro paint schemes, leaving us with the boring fleet we have now. Of course, there were a few examples of the original old school paint schemes still in service across the system, but they were extremely rare. The last authentic Phase 3 piece of equipment, MPCU number 90368 was repainted in 2017, and the last authentic Phase 4 piece of equipment, Dash 8 number 515 was repainted in the same year. If you didn't live in Chicago where these locomotives stayed most of the time, Phase 5 was the only paint scheme you'd be able to see on Amtrak trains, but all this is going to change soon when Amtrak gets new locomotives. After years of nothing but Phase 5, Amtrak is beginning to receive new long distance locomotives, which means that we're about to enter another transitional period between Amtrak paint schemes. But before I get ahead of myself, let's see where this all started. Our story begins back in 2014, when Amtrak wanted to replace the aging locomotives used on their corridor routes such as the Surfliner and Midwest services. This was a strange period in the mid-2010s when there was almost no good diesel passenger locomotive offerings from EMD or GE, but Amtrak had just begun to receive Siemens ACS-64 electric locomotives for service on the Northeast Corridor. Although Siemens had lots of experience around the world building quality locomotives, the ACS-64 City Sprinter locomotives were among the first Siemens locomotives to be operated in the US. The sprinters were found to be pretty decent workhorses, so Amtrak decided to give Siemens another opportunity to build something great for them. In 2014, Illinois, California, Michigan, Missouri, and Washington State worked with Siemens to design an all-new locomotive based on diesels built by Siemens in Europe. These new locomotives were to be called SC44 Charger locomotives, with features such as Tier 4 diesel emissions, a top speed of 125 miles per hour, 4400 horsepower, and faster acceleration and deceleration than the outgoing F59 PHI and P42 locomotives previously used on these corridor routes. Additionally, these locomotives would have removable noses, making for easy repairs in the case of collisions. Amtrak had learned this lesson the hard way on the General Electric Genesis locomotives which had a body that was basically just one big shell. This meant that in the case of a damaged front end, the locomotives would need an entirely new shell which was costly and hard to repair. Eventually, Amtrak fitted the Genesis locomotives with bolt-on noses, which were easier to repair, but prior to that, the noses were a big issue. A total of 34 brand new Siemens SC44 Charger diesels were ordered for Amtrak's state-funded corridor routes around the country. Of these, 21 were for the Midwest, 6 were for Northern California, and 7 were for the Pacific Northwest. Eventually, the order for 34 locomotives was upgraded to 63, once an additional 29 were ordered for these same routes. The classification for these new locomotives was a standard Siemens classification with the S standing for Siemens, the C standing for Charger, the series of locomotive, and the 44 representing the 4400 horsepower. Nice and straightforward. About two years after Amtrak placed the first orders for these new chargers, footage surfaced of Charger number 4601 testing at TTCI in Pueblo, Colorado in August of 2016. This was the first time anyone had seen footage of one of these testing and it made a sound different from almost any other diesel locomotive around. Since Siemens doesn't have a diesel engine of their own, they used the Cummins QSK95 turbocharged V16 to power the Charger locomotives. This essentially made them sound like giant Dodge Rams.
The first charger was also seen in a new paint scheme, which at the time people thought was just for testing, but eventually it just became the paint scheme for Amtrak Midwest trains. Less than a month later, 4604, another SC-44, made its way east from the Siemens Mobility Plant in Florin, California to Washington, D.C., where it began high-speed testing on the Northeast Corridor with speeds of up to 125 miles per hour. For the next few years, chargers began to enter service on many corridor routes such as the Cascades, Surfliner, Northern California service, and Midwest service. The SC-44s were found to be decent locomotives, but they had a lot of issues being implemented in the Midwest for some reason. There were two variants of the SC-44 that Amtrak received, both with the same classification. The SC-44 is assigned to the Midwest and Cascades service at a flat roof, but the SC-44s in California had an aerodynamic spoiler so that the locomotives would match the height of the bi-level cars they would often pull, decreasing drag and thus increasing fuel mileage. The SC-44 succeeded for the most part, retiring the F-59s in Cascades and Surfliner service and supplementing the F-59s in Northern California. As for the Midwest, the SC-44s are slowly replacing the P-42s that previously powered these trains, and said P-42s are being entered into long-distance service, but this is happening pretty slowly with the issues that the Chargers are having there. Along with Amtrak, many other railroads were in need of new locomotives too, so the Altamont Corridor Express, Coaster, Mark, Long Island Railroad, and Metro North have variants of the SC-44 on order, or even already in service. Specifically, Metro North and Long Island Railroad will receive unique dual-mode chargers capable of switching from diesel power to third rail power for Penn Station and Grand Central Terminal. I wouldn't be surprised if these were called something like SC32DMs, similar to the P32ACDMs that Metro North is currently using. Long Island Railroad has even gone as far as to fit Siemens electric dual mode systems onto one of its DM30ACs for testing. Speaking of unique chargers that railroads have ordered, the SC44 isn't the only kind of charger locomotive currently in service. In 2014, around the same time that Amtrak ordered their SC44s, privately owned higher speed rail company Brightline ordered 10 SCB40 locomotives to power their trains. These engines are essentially just SC44s detuned to 4000 horsepower with a streamlined front end. Canada's Via Rail followed suit in 2018, ordering 32 similar bi-directional train sets that are to be powered by SC44s with streamlined noses. These locomotives are classified as SC44s, although they have a completely different front end than the traditional SC44s. Finally, the last variant of Charger is the Amtrak Long Distance variant, which is what I originally wanted to talk about in this video. On December 21st, 2018, Amtrak placed an order for 75 modified Chargers capable of replacing the current fleet of GE Genesis locomotives. The first was scheduled to enter service in 2021, with the last entering service in 2024. Originally, these were to look identical to the SC44s but have 4200 horsepower and be more optimized for long distance service, meaning they'd have larger fuel tanks and other features that would make them preferable to SC44s for long distance trains. The original order specified for 75, meaning that these new long distance chargers would not fully replace the Genesis locomotives, rather replace the out of service Genesis units as a large portion of the fleet is wrecked and or stored. The contract had options for an additional 100, so I guess if Amtrak decides that they like these engines, they'll eventually fully replace the P40s and P42s. For a while, most people expected these long distance chargers would look identical to the current SC44s we see on corridor routes, but in 2020, official Amtrak renderings of the long distance chargers were revealed, and they were very different from the unofficial renderings we had seen previously. Not only were the new chargers in a completely different paint scheme, but they also had an ACS64 style cab as opposed to that weird cab seen on the SC44s. It was also announced that these new engines were to be called ALC42s, which was as to be expected as they would not be called SC44s considering they had only 4200 horsepower, not 4400. The ALC stood for Amtrak Long Distance Charger, and the 42 represented the 4200 horsepower. These ALC 42s would have a top speed of 125 miles per hour, AXIS, PTC, and other signaling systems, and adhere to the EPA's Tier 4 emissions standards, which is a huge improvement from the P42s, which are, well, up to the standards of the 1990s. These new units are expected to be numbered number 300 through number 374, but if Amtrak ends up going for the additional 100 units from Siemens in the future, they'll be number 300 through 474. Yes, that means that either MPCU number 406 or ALC42 number 406 will have to be renumbered. Notably, on March 16th, 2021, it was also announced that Amtrak would be repainting a few of these new ALC42s into heritage paint schemes for the railroad's 50th anniversary. Right now, number 300 wears the brand new Phase 6 paint scheme, Number 301 wears a one-of-a-kind Day 1 Heritage paint scheme paying homage to Amtrak's first ever paint scheme, only ever seen before on E8 number 4316 to commemorate their first day of service in 1971. Number 302 through 305 will wear the Phase 6 paint scheme, and finally number 306 through 374 will wear the Phase 7 paint scheme similar to the Phase 6 paint scheme. 
In other paint scheme news, Amtrak will be repainting a few existing P-42s into heritage paint schemes for the railroad's 50th anniversary. In the summer of 2021, the first few ALC-42s were released from the Siemens plant in California and shipped east to Washington, D.C. for testing. Later in the summer, Amtrak announced a $7.3 billion deal with Siemens to purchase even more equipment from them, including Siemens Venture Cars, which I'll talk about in a minute, and also even more chargers, some of which will be dual mode like those of the Long Island Railroad and Metro North, and some of which will be battery powered. Details right now are pretty scarce, so unfortunately that's all we know when this video is coming out. With Amtrak's new ALC-42s on the horizon, we're once again entering a transitional period like the 1990s. Amtrak's tired Phase 5 paint scheme is finally on its way out, and I can't wait to start seeing mixed paint scheme equipment on trains. More importantly, we're entering a golden era of Amtrak getting new equipment, most of which is built by Siemens. When all is said and done, Amtrak's fleet of locomotives will be built mostly by Siemens, including ACS-64s, SC-44s, ALC-42s, and the dual-mode and battery-powered chargers. Honestly, I don't mind this new era of Siemens locomotives replacing GEs, as I've never been a big fan of the Genesis series locomotives. But now that we're done talking about the locomotives, let's focus on something more passenger-oriented. Amtrak's plans for what to do with their massive fleet of rail cars. Chapter 2. New Siemens Venture Cars Another pretty massive project that Amtrak has been taking on with Siemens is the acquisition of new cars that will be used on many of their busiest routes. Similar to the SC44 story, the story of these cars begins in 2014, but that's where the similarities end. This story doesn't begin with Amtrak. It starts on the privately owned railroad Brightline, which was in need of new cars to run with their SCB40s for their new service between Miami and West Palm Beach, Florida. These cars were to be capable of 125 miles per hour, have sliding doors, and have spacious and modern interiors. When Siemens received this order from Brightline, instead of designing a completely new car from scratch, they realized that they had a car that was up to all these standards called the Viaggio Comfort. Viaggio Comfort cars had been in service all around Europe since 2008, so it was as easy as taking that design and modifying it slightly to better fit American standards. Luckily for Siemens, the first order that they had received for these cars was a small one, with Brightline only ordering 20 cars in total. The Rockwell Group Design Studio was contracted to adapt the Viaggio design for America, and by 2015, the first car was completed. This new car had a modern and welcoming interior, and it was named the Siemens Venture Car. Six months later, the first full train set was completed for Brightline. A year or two before this car was completed, a group of states including California, Illinois, Michigan, and Missouri announced that they were in need of new cars for their Amtrak RAN, Midwest, and Northern California services. Originally, Nippon Shario was to build these cars for Amtrak, but when the first car built in 2015 started testing, it became evident that this was not a good option for Amtrak. In August of 2015, a Nippon Shario prototype car failed a buff strength test, and in turn the deal with Amtrak was cancelled. At this point, it was 2018 and the Venture Cars had already proved themselves on Brightline. Amtrak turned to Siemens, realizing that their plant in Florin, California was very close to their Northern California services, making them a more convenient company to order cars from anyways. The group of states placed an order for 49 cars for California and 88 for the Midwest for a grand total of 137 cars. These cars were to be styled to match the SC44s that would pull them on these trains. The first of these three cars were completed in February of 2020, and one was sent to the Northeast to test at speed on the Northeast Corridor. I was actually lucky enough to see this test extra. The first of these cars entered service in California in the summer of 2020, with Midwest cars entering service about a year later after issues with the trucks. This on its own was a pretty minor project, but it turned out that Amtrak liked these cars, so on July 7th, 2021, when Amtrak announced its $7.3 billion deal with Siemens for next generation equipment, it was announced that Siemens would be building 83 train sets which are made up of venture cars. These train sets will replace the 50 year old Amfleet 1s which have really been showing their age lately. Unfortunately, much like the dual mode and battery powered chargers, specific details about this order are still pretty scarce, but word on the street is that there will be cab cars to replace the aging Metroliner cab cars on the Keystone and Shuttle routes, in addition to just regular cars that will probably be identical to the Venture cars seen in the Midwest and NorCal. Other than that, there really isn't much information about these cars, but once again, these big orders for equipment continue to show that Siemens is going to be the future of Amtrak. Chapter 3 New Viewliner 2 Sleeper Cars Amtrak's long-distance system is an expensive one, and services often run overnight requiring the availability of sleeper cars where passengers can get a good night's sleep. Amtrak has always had a fleet of designated sleeper cars fitted with bedrooms and roomettes, but not everyone knows that there are two completely separate fleets of cars that seldom mix. Generally west of Chicago, Amtrak stations use low-level platforms and there are less tunnels and bridges with low clearances, so for these services, Amtrak uses their iconic superliners, which are bi-level cars that you'll see quite often on trains such as the California Zephyr, Texas Eagle, and Empire Builder. These cars have low-level doors, meaning that if they're at a station with high-level platforms, this will happen. 
Generally though, high level platforms are mostly in the northeast, so for this, Amtrak has another type of sleeper called the Viewliner. These cars are used mostly on the Lakeshore Limited and any long distance service that goes through New York Penn Station because superliners are too tall to fit in there. These Viewliner cars are single level cars that have high level platform boarding capabilities, but they also have trap doors for low level platform boarding. More importantly, they're not nearly as tall as the superliners, so they can run under the wires on the northeast corridor. Built in 1988, Amtrak's Viewliner 1 cars have served the Northeast well for over 30 years. Amtrak's fleet of Superliners, known as Superliner 2s, was built between 1991 and 1996, so they're getting old, but not quite as old as the Viewliner 1s. Plus, the Viewliner routes get much more ridership, causing more wear and tear to these cars and also providing more funding. As almost every Superliner-based route loses money for every passenger, but there are a few Viewliner-based routes that make a little bit of money, or at least don't lose hundreds per passenger. Anyways, in reaction to the Viewliners seeming somewhat old and tired, Amtrak decided to order a fleet of new Viewliners to not replace but supplement the current ones, as they begin to be used less. In July of 2010, Amtrak placed an order with Spanish manufacturer CAF to build a fleet of 130 Viewliner-based cars. In this order, 55 were to be baggage cars to replace the ancient heritage baggage cars, 25 were to be dining cars, 25 were to be sleepers, and 25 were to be baggage dorms, which are cars that are half sleeper and half baggage car, often used for crews of trains to sleep in. These cars were to be painted in a modernized version of Amtrak's Phase 3 paint scheme. All of these 130 cars were expected to be delivered in 2015, Amtrak had only begun to receive some of the first baggage cars in late 2015. As of 2021, all cars have been delivered, except for a few of the sleepers which should be delivered by the end of the year. Despite being an extremely delayed project, the Viewliner 2s should be a nice way to refresh the aging Viewliner 1s. I know this section of the video was pretty short, mostly because there's not that much interesting stuff to talk about in relation to these cars, but still, the Viewliner 2 program is not really mentioned much when talking about Amtrak's plans for modernization, mostly just because this project was supposed to be completed over 5 years ago. Chapter 4, Refreshed Superliner Cars as I mentioned in the last section, Amtrak has two types of sleeper cars, the single level viewliners and the bi-level superliners. Although the viewliners are getting replaced, or at least relieved of some duties very soon, the superliners are almost just as old but with no plans of replacement on the horizon. Unfortunately, if you look at the numbers, the routes that use superliners aren't profitable enough to warrant spending money on new cars, but this doesn't mean that Amtrak won't do anything to keep these aging cars feeling fresh. On June 16th, 2021, Amtrak announced that they would begin to refresh the interiors of all the superliner cars with upgrades including new seats, lighting, carpets, and upholstery. This program is projected to be completed by 2024, but the first refreshed cars are already in service right now. Again, this was another pretty short section of the video, but I still think that it's worth mentioning. Because although they don't get much ridership and they certainly aren't profitable, Amtrak's western long distance routes are a very important part of their system, and thus worth mentioning. Chapter 5. New Villa Liberty High Speed Trains Generally when people talk about Amtrak's modernization, one of the projects that stands out most as being the future of American passenger rail is the procurement of new Acela trains to replace the current ones. Nowadays, the Acela Express, America's fastest train, uses 20 year old train sets that are really starting to show their age. Just look at that color palette, those interiors, and the fact that one snapped in half in New York. Not a great look. This portion of the video will talk about the replacement for the current Acela trains that will be entering service on the Northeast Corridor very soon. Before I get into talking about the Gen 2 Acelas, I want to preface this by saying that I really won't be getting too deep into the details here, because I already made an entire video about this. Instead of telling the entire story, I'm just going to quickly recap the history and then talk about some of the recent developments in the testing process of the new Acelas. So here we go, a one minute history of the Acela Express. The current fleet of Acela trains entered service in 2000 to celebrate the new millennium and the completion of the New Haven to Boston electrification project. These trains served on the Acela Express route between Boston and Washington DC from 2000 until the current day. By the time that the Acelas were about 15 years old in 2015, they were beginning to show their age with dated interiors and exteriors, and the occasional mechanical failure. Realizing the state of the Acela train sets, Amtrak placed an order for 28 brand new Alstom Avelia Liberty train sets. In 2020, the first two train sets were completed, with one being sent to Pueblo, Colorado for government testing, and the second one being sent to Philadelphia for testing on the Northeast Corridor. Soon enough, the two train sets began testing in their respective parts of the country, and after a few months, the train set that was in Colorado was approved for passenger service by the FRA and returned to Alstom for final touches. The Philadelphia-based train set continued testing all over the corridor, mostly staying in the New York area. And that's your recap. Since the last video I made talking about the Avelia Liberty in October, some good news has come out, but also some unfortunate news has also come out. 
The good news is that we finally found out more details about the trains themselves, such as the fact that they're built to run with only one pantograph up, as when they're doing speeds of up to 165 miles per hour, the first pantograph would cause the wire to bounce, meaning that the trailing pantograph wouldn't get that much power anyways. The unfortunate news that came out though, was that the Avelias wouldn't enter service until 2022, as opposed to 2021 as originally planned, because testing found out that there were upgrades that needed to be made to the pantographs. This means that everything will be delayed about a year, and the last OG Acela train set will probably be retired in 2023. I wonder what that means for their lease, as the Acellas were originally leased from Alstom with their contract ending in 2022. I guess we'll have to see what happens. Until then, the Avelias will continue to be built by Alstom and the one Philadelphia-based train set will continue to do nightly testing along the Northeast Corridor until Amtrak decides that it's done enough testing. Although this is a slower moving project in terms of how things are getting done, the Avelias won't be slow at all, eventually having a top speed of 220 miles per hour once proper high speed infrastructure is implemented. It's still a very important project that will definitely bring a lot of ridership to Amtrak. As for the old Acellas, they'll stay in service for the next few years until the fully furnished Avelias are delivered to Amtrak for revenue service in 2022. As the Avelias are slowly phased into service, the first gen Acela train sets will be stored in Delaware with the HHP8s until late 2022 when their 20 year lease from Alstom will expire, meaning that some of the Acellas and all of the similar looking HHP8s will be returned to Alstom for the most part, except for a few of the Acela train sets that Amtrak owns flat out. I bet at least one Acela will be donated to a museum just because of how historically significant the original Acelas were. But as for many of the other OG Acelas, some will probably be scrapped and maybe some will be sold off to private high-speed railroads either to be used for testing or to be rebuilt and used for service. No matter what happens, the first gen Acelas will continue to serve the Northeast for a few more years, but soon they'll be replaced by much more modern and technologically advanced awesome train sets very soon. Chapter 6 Timeline well there you go, those are all the improvements Amtrak is making to its fleet of equipment in one video. I think that to wrap up this video I should talk about the timeline of when all these things are happening. So let's start right now in the summer of 2021. In early summer the first Siemens ALC42 was delivered for testing. Later in the summer the Siemens Venture Cars will fully enter service on Amtrak Midwest services and Northern California services. Later on the last Viewliner 2s remaining in the order from almost 10 years ago will be delivered. Around the end of 2021 the first Siemens ALC42 will enter revenue service. In 2022 the first Avelia Liberty train will enter service and throughout the course of the year a fleet of 28 train sets in total will be delivered to Amtrak allowing for the full retirement of the original Acelas in 2023. In 2024, the entire fleet of superliners will have been refurbished, and the final ALC-42 of Amtrak's original order of 75 will have been delivered. By this point, Amtrak most likely will have chosen to order an additional 100 from Siemens, allowing for the complete retirement of the Genesis locomotives by 2030. In 2025, the first Amfleet 1 replacements will arrive, along with cab cars to replace the Metroliners. Also in that year, the dual-mode chargers will be delivered, allowing for the retirement of the P-32s in New York. Finally, by 2030, Amfleet 1s and all GE Genesis locomotives will have been retired for the most part, leaving Amtrak with a much newer fleet of Siemens railcars and locomotives. Over the next 10 years, we'll begin to see a full overhaul of Amtrak's fleet, and there sure is a lot to look forward to. With that said, I suggest that you follow along on my YouTube channel with my monthly news series called This Month on the Railroad. In this series, I'll make sure to mention every piece of news that comes out from Amtrak about the modernization of their fleet. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video.